or so. All right, so good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for being here. It's an, always an honor to start the day with you. And I got a question for Andrea. I think Andrea's gonna like this one. I'm excited, you. Do tell. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you know why um, blind people don't do skydiving? <laughs> I don't know, and I'm scared about the answer. <laughs> because it scares their dogs. <laughs> scares their dogs? Yes, Andrea, yes. I don't know. Is it the English thing? I don't get it. Blind people have dogs that help them. <gasps> <laughs> okay, if you have to explain the joke, now we get to another level. <laughs> I don't know if that was a hard one to get. I'm just saying. You're just <laughs> even down a level. You're an intelligent <laughs> joker. <laughs> oh, God. I don't Good morning, good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, Southeast. Good morning, East Coast. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hope you're having a phenomenal morning. It is Friday, the 15th, and uh, 15 days in, the 15 days into this new year. How about that, Sorrel? Good morning. You are on mute, Sorrel. Uh, you don't have to say that part anymore. I'm always on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Giovanni. 15th day, and we're blessed today with the presence of Joanne and Deborah and Rose. Oh my God, we've got people in the room that we need to say Happy New Year to. Happy New yeah. Year, Joanne. <laughs> jo Happy I think New Joanne Year, missed everybody. The <laughs> Happy New Year. Let's get us ready. Let's get us primed. Let's get us the way to start the daily huddle and the way to start your day. So, um, Deborah, good to see you, Deborah. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Gio. I am exactly how I say I am, and today I am excited. Excited, yes. Thank you, Deborah. Amber, good morning. Where are you? Good morning. I am right here, right where I need to be. <laughs> At any moment, we are right where we're supposed to be. You know, every now and then, I have an, I have a breakdown in the morning, and then somebody says you are where you're supposed to be. It like calms me. Like, I guess so. Lori K, good morning. Two questions for you. What yes. time is it, and one thing you're grateful for? The time is right now, which can be any better. Um, and what am I grateful for? For knowing so many amazing people and uh, knowing Vince and uh, understanding his talk today, I'm very excited about. I know, Vince. I mean, that was a crazy promise, Vince. That promise is not working for me. Good morning, Sorrel. How are you, America's executive coach? Thank you for being here. Giovanni, I am awesome, and I am right there with you. <laughs> As uh, the number one transformational leadership coach, when you say, my God, this promise is not working for me. It's like, you know, is that people better pay attention. And what is that promise? I don't know that Vince is making a promise or is he just asking the question? And the question is, is it possible? Listen, get on the edge of your seats. Is it possible to lose weight while eating more? without exercise. And everyone knows the formula events, eat less, move more. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like the reverse of that formula and we can't wait to hear. Now, folks, get ready because Vince comes with the qualifications to be the one, the only one who can have this conversation this morning. So 
Don't let the little goatee fool you. Vince is a young 58 years old. He's passionate about helping people with weight loss, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol to reduce their dependency on medication and get them off meds completely. Now, if you've got a pack of pills, one that says AM, one that says PM, and you religiously take them, Vince's promise is that you'll be able to eat all that you can and get off your meds. Now, how does Vince do that? Vince runs a business called Eat Plants and Thrive, which creates and markets programs that help people treat diabetes, obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol with plant-based nutrition. So I'm not gonna say any more, Vince, because everyone's waiting now for the formula. How do I lose weight while eating more and not exercising? So tell us, Vince, good morning and welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for allowing me to occupy your space and be on the Daily Huddle. I am so happy and excited to be here and to share with you some of the things that I've shared with clients literally all over the world. And uh, it's a formula that uh, when you first hear it, it sounds completely impossible. Now I came up with that tagline by literally watching my clients eat more food than they have ever eaten before. I'm watching them make these big plates full of food, yet still lose weight every week. And it happens even if you don't exercise. Now, let me be perfectly clear. Exercise is very important, right? Eat, sleep, move. Those are the three most important things you can do for health. Eat, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. Sleep, there is no replacement for sleep, even though I got very little last night because I was working on stuff, right? We're entrepreneurs, you got to work. Sometimes you don't get as much, but you got to sleep and move. If I could get you to move at least 15 minutes, ideally 30 minutes every day, those that that's the magic formula. There is no pill for that. If you can do those things, that is better than medicine. Now, uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. Oh, only if the host disables participant screen sharing. Uh, Gio or Sorrell. Vince, okay. you're clear now. Go for it. Okay. I'm still saying host disabled the screen. Host, host disabled the screen sharing. I can, I can do this talk without sharing the screen. Um, no, please go ahead and share your screen. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. So I actually created this challenge, this uh, weight loss challenge, lose, the lose weight by eating more challenge. Sounds like this is not possible, but I promise you that it is. So, all right. So how is it possible? How is it possible to eat all you want and still lose one to two pounds per week without exercise? The answer is in this thing called calorie density. The answer is in calorie density. I'm gonna explain calorie density, then I'm gonna give you some examples that's really gonna hit home with you. Okay, calorie density is the number of calories per pound of food. Calories per pound of food. So the item with the lowest calorie density ever, ever, ever is water. How many calories are in water? Zero, right? There's no calories in water, but water has mass. Water has mass without the calories. So while that sounds trivial, it really isn't. And we will see that. Items that have a lot of water in them have a very low calorie density, like soups, right? Uh, like fruits and vegetables, which is the next thing up is vegetables, vegetables and fruits, very low in calorie density. 
means very little calories per pound of food. And that is part of a formula that you will see is the single best thing for weight loss. Okay, the next up, I'm going from the lowest to the highest in calorie density. Next up are oats, like uh, oatmeal and uh, other whole grains and brown rice uh, and quinoa and farro and all different types of whole grains. Then next up, we've got beans, lentils, uh, and that's anything, legume is anything that's grown in a pod, like, uh, like soybeans or green beans or um, uh, lentils, split peas. That's the next up. Okay, then we've got your, your, your meats, your chickens and your steaks. Then we've got your, your breads, your refined carbs, your refined carbs. And you see, as we go up in calorie density, you can eat a little, but get a lot of calories. And that's why most of us have trouble losing weight because we're eating foods where the calorie density is high. You eat a little, get a lot of calories. The trick is if you eat low calorie density, you can eat a lot and take in a little calories. That's the secret. Okay, now I put in here, I separated, uh, yeah, Giovanni. Yeah, I was just kind of wondering if you can expand your screen so that we don't see the whole, the, your whole computer screen. If you just click on expand so that, because we're seeing three three different screens right now. We're seeing three screens. Okay. Click on expand on the top. Okay. I think actually you have, you're showing us your presenter mode and we should have the, so if you switch screens. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry. I shared the wrong good. screen. Let's try this again. I shared the wrong screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. I said, let's see if this is better. Thank you for it. Is that better? There you go. There Thanks. you go. <laughs> oh man, I'm so sorry for that. Thank you for uh, for, for for stopping me on that, uh, uh, Gio. No, okay. it's awesome. This is good. I mean, it's just, it's just just getting too good. So I didn't I didn't want any distractions for me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So anyway, uh, I, I did want to show the difference here of dried fruit versus regular fruit. Now, if you take grapes, okay, grapes have a very low calorie density. It's probably around 250, 300. But if you take the water out and make it a raisin, what you've done is you have not removed any calories. Remember, water's got no calories. You didn't take out any calories, but you took out weight. And so the calorie density goes from being relatively low to pretty doggone high. And that is something that's really, so, so later on, I'm gonna show you the formula in a few minutes. And when I do, you're gonna see that uh, grapes, you eat all you want, but the dry fruit, no, don't go crazy. Eat all you want on that because the calorie density is high. If you follow the calorie density formula, you can eat as much as you want and you will still lose weight. Okay, so next up is uh, cheese. Very high in calorie density. It's very high in fat, very high in calorie density. Uh, then junk food. Now things like uh, potato chips and uh, pretzels and uh, candy bars and things that really high in calorie density. And the, 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 the king of the highest calorie density on the planet. Does anybody want to guess? Does anybody want to come off of mute and guess what single item do you think has the highest calorie density on the planet? Lori K. Meat. What was that? Is it meat? It is not meat. There is something that's got a much higher calorie density than that. Does somebody else want to guess? Any other guesses? Alcohol. Alcohol. Alcohol is another good guess, but this item has higher calorie, much higher calorie density than alcohol. Giovanni, you're fine. You can go back and drink all you want. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. What you got, Joanne? It's my sin, it's ice cream. Ice cream is really high, but there's something higher. <gasps> ice cream equals blood in my family. Well, ice cream, ice cream, so ice cream, Ice cream contains a combination of sugar and fat, which is why it's 
unbelievably addictive and unbelievably high in calorie density and help and, and, and cause you to gain a lot of weight. The single highest calorie dense item on the planet is oil. Oil. Oil is 100% fat. The calorie density of oil is like 20 times more, can be 20 times more than fruit. Now, that is such an unbelievable difference that I've got to give you some examples to really help that to, to, to hit for you. So here's my first example. This is a little bag of Doritos. Now I took a picture of this in a grocery store and I hope that you can actually see my hand around that bag. That's a little teeny bag, only 2.75 ounces, less than, less than three ounces. But that little bag has 410 calories. Now that bag is so small, most of us will knock that out and don't even think about it. Like, I mean, and you think this is just an innocent little bag of chips. It's not a big deal, right? I mean, because it's like nothing to it. You don't get full at all. But this 410 calories, now I'm going to ask you another question. If you were to eat 410 calories of cantaloupe, how many ounces of cantaloupe do you think you would have to eat to get 410 calories? Well, if this is 2.75 ounces, maybe 10 ounces of cantaloupe, maybe 15 ounces of cantaloupe. Uh, can I get some guesses of how uh, many ounces of cantaloupe? 250 ounces. What'd you say? 250 ounces. That's 250. Whoa! <laughs> Thank you. You lost your mind. I would say it is less than 250 ounces. <laughs> The, the answer is 44 ounces. Wow. Literally 16 times more food to get the same number of calories. 16 times. That comes out to being over two cantaloupes. Same calories as that little bag. Now, I ask you a question. Have you ever eaten two cantaloupes at one time? <laughs> no. Have you ever eaten one full cantaloupe at one time? Uh, no. No. I actually do every day. This is my breakfast right now. This is what I eat. I eat a cantaloupe every day. One full cantaloupe is like half the calories than that full bag. And that one full, you know why you can't eat a cantaloupe? You know why you definitely can't eat two cantaloupes? Because you're full but you can eat this and you're not full. You can eat two of these. You can eat three of these and you're not full. You eat a cantaloupe or two and you can't do it because you eat until you get full. That's the point. That's the point. When you eat foods where the calorie density is low, you can eat until you get full. Here's another example. This teeny little Snickers bar. You see how small that is? That it spits in the palm of my hand. And that is less than two ounces, 1.86 ounces uh, is 250 calories. And the number of ounces of watermelon that you would have to eat to get to the same calories, 29 ounces. It's 15 times more food than the little candy bars. It's almost two pounds. It's almost two pounds which you can't eat. Lori Kay, you got a question? You got, you're on mute. Yeah. yeah, so does it not matter that watermelon has so much sugar? So Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop my share for a second because I want you to see I get so animated when I get this question. So let's talk for a second about the sugar in fruit. Here's what you get. So here's the thing, right? We think of sugar as a bad thing because it is a highly refined food. It's terrible for your gut bacteria. It's terrible for causing cancer. It's terrible for so many things because it is a highly refined food. So you think of candies, uh, cotton candy or 
a, a soda, a, a soda or a pop, depending upon where you're from, Coke, Pepsi, uh, these things that are all sugar and incredibly harmful. But those are man-made. When you eat fruit, you are getting fiber. You're getting the purest water. You're getting vitamins. You're getting minerals. You're getting polyphenols. You're getting phytonutrients. You're getting a symphony of nutrition along with nature's sugar, not a refined sugar, but nature's sugar. And you can literally eat all the whole fruit you want. And you will have better health. You will help to have, uh, uh, you will, it'll help you lose weight. It'll help to reverse heart disease. It'll help to lower blood pressure. There was a study done saying the single best thing that you can do to prevent cancer is eat more fruits and vegetables. Single best, single best thing, single best thing. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Eat all the fruits you want, even if you're diabetic. Now, I, it, it's going to take me longer than what we have here to go into that, uh, but I would be happy to explain that. But even if you're diabetic, fruits and vegetables are amazing. Refined sugars are harmful. Whole fruits are amazing because they come in this wonderful package of a symphony of nutrition. Okay? All right. So let me make sure I share the right screen this time. Oh, my goodness. Please tell me that's the full screen. Okay, good, good. All right. So I'll get one more example, then I'm going to hurry up because I'm about to go over time, and I don't want to do that. So uh, really quickly, uh, that is the Reese's cup is 2.4 ounces, uh, and that's 400 calories. And you got to eat nine oranges to get the same calories as the Reese's cup. Nine oranges compared to Reese's cups. Okay, this image really helps to hit it home. Uh, this is five, these are images of five different stomachs, and each image has 500 calories. This is 500 calories of oil. You're not full. That's only four tablespoons. Your body's got to handle 500 calories, and you're nowhere near full. 500 calories worth of cheese. You aren't anywhere near being full, but your body's got to deal with these calories. The same thing with the meat. Uh, when we get into whole grains and beans and lentils, you see how much more full you get. And when you add fruits and vegetables to it, now 500 calories, you're super full. Over here, 500 calories, you are not. This is why this works. So how is it possible to eat all you want, still lose one or two pounds a week without exercise? I'm going to go through this really fast. Very simple. Eat below the red line. And you can eat as much as you want and still lose one to two pounds per week. Eat below the red line. Eat as much as you want and still lose one to two pounds per week. And while you are doing that, not only are you going to be losing weight, but this amazing doctor, Dr. Esselstyn, helped to reverse heart disease by eating below the red line. This is uh, an angiogram of an artery, left anterior descending artery. This artery is known as the widow maker. When it gets clogged like this, that's called atherosclerosis. That can happen without any symptoms. Like I think it's something like 50% of the people that have heart disease, the first symptom is death. Because when it happens to this artery and then it closes, you die. That's a, a fatal heart attack. And this patient, though, didn't have any medical intervention, no stents, no angiogram, no medication, no medical intervention other than eating below the red line. And then this is the same artery after eating foods that are below the red line. This is complete reversal of heart disease. The number one cause of death in this country is heart disease. And we can reverse it by eating unprocessed plant-based foods. Now, I am going, I could go on, but I'm going to just stop right. I'm just going to stop right now because I want to respect your time. 
Yeah. Oh my God. And we want you to go on and on too, right? A couple of quick questions from uh, the uh, people watching on Facebook. Uh, Linda wants to know, is raw sugar better a better option than refined sugar? Or are you recommending that even the raw stuff that's advertised as good be eliminated as well? You are best off if you minimize all of your sweeteners with the exception of two. So there are two actually health promoting sweeteners. One is dates, or you can make your own date paste or date syrup. Dates are whole fruits, unbelievably sweet, super, super, super sweet. And you can make your own date paste or date sugar by just taking date, put some water in a food processor, and then you can put that on whatever you want. If they're pitted, obviously you gotta take the pits out. Uh, and molasses. So those two sweeteners are health promoting. Any other sweetener, you want to minimize. You want to minimize any other sweetener. Raw sugar, um, you know, uh, uh, any other sweetener that you can think of, you want to minimize. Now, uh, if you if you have to use sugar, remember the the poison is in the dosage. So minimize it, but. The sugar that I actually use, a spoon of sugar in my coffee, uh, is a, a turbinado sugar. That's the least uh, pr uh, refined, um, but it's not health promoting. The ideal amount of sugar is none. Now, when it comes to uh, eating protein, uh, let's say somebody is uh, wanting to build muscle, look more toned, and, you know, the saying out there is the more protein you put into your body, the more muscle you'll build, the more it will help you with uh, weight bearing exercises and all that good stuff. How do you get protein eating below the red line? Have you ever seen an 800 pound gorilla? <laughs> yes, I have. Those things are massive. Have you ever seen like a thoroughbred horse, a bull, elephants, rhinoceros, giraffes, the largest, strongest land mammals on the planet don't eat meat. If you think you've got to, and they have tons of muscle. If you think you got to get your protein from, from meat, then I will ask you this question. Well, if you're eating your beef and your steak and your chicken and your turkey, and that's where you're getting your protein from, my question to you is, what do they eat? Where did they get, where does a cow get their protein from? Cows don't eat meat. Where does chickens get their protein from? They don't eat meat. They get their protein from plants. You see, plants actually are the only, is the only thing, yes, Andrea, I've got a fan in Andrea. Thank you, Andrea, yes. You get all the, and Ronald, thank you. Listen, we are brainwashed. In fact, there's a book written called Proteinaholic by uh, Garth Davis, Dr. Garth Davis. He is a, uh, a doctor that does weight loss surgery. He wrote a book called Proteinaholic because we eat too much protein. What we need to worry about is getting enough fiber. 97% of Americans eat don't are, are, are deficient in fiber. 97% are deficient in fiber. Yet most Americans eat twice as much protein as what we really need. We're proteinaholics. There are plenty, there's a, there's a documentary that I would love for you to pull up, Sorrel, called The Game Changers. Write that down, The Game Changers. It is on Netflix. They show bodybuilders, football players, boxers, MMA fighters, uh, Olympic weightlifters, all these strength athletes, strongest man in the world contest. All of these athletes tell you that their performance improved. Their, their bodybuilding improved. Their strength improves when they go plant-based. Why? Because the sulfur-containing amino acids in meat causes inflammation. And the more inflammation that you have, the more soreness that you get. The more soreness that you get, you got to have more time to recover. But when you eliminate that, you eliminate inflammation and you recover faster and your performance is better. Yes, Gio. 
Now, thank you for that. that. That is phenomenal, completely against anything I eat. This is so wrong in so many levels. <laughs> um, but quick, 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 just two things on your thoughts on pasta, potatoes, and white rice. Okay. Pa pasta, potatoes, white rice. Um, pasta. Pick the right pasta. Whole grain pasta. There's bean pasta. There's lentil pasta. Um, and I try to stay away from the white, highly refined foods, white sugar, white uh, breads. The, you know, when, when, when those uh, grains are grown, they're brown, but man has to process it to make it white, okay? And you wanna eat minimally processed foods. So pasta, whole grain pasta, if you go for pastas, I don't avoid pasta. Matter of fact, I had pasta last night. Whole grain, whole grain pasta or bean pasta or lentil pasta, or if you wanna do the zucchini uh, 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 pasta where you make your own, you can do that. Um, what, uh, potatoes, awesome. Potatoes are incredibly healthy foods. The problem with potatoes, particularly the white potatoes, is that they got bad friends. So with potatoes, we normally put butter and sour cream and bacon on it. So they've got unbelievably terrible friends. But the potato itself is very healthy. So what I like on potatoes is I like sweet potatoes. In fact, one of the things I always recommend to my clients is bake up a bunch of sweet potatoes and put it in your refrigerator. Then when you want a quick snack, all you got to do is slice it, put it in the microwave for one minute. You've got a very healthy, because sweet potatoes are amazing by themselves without anything. White potatoes, very healthy also, but because I don't want you to put butter and sour cream, I either want you to mash them uh, with uh, almond milk or you can put some guacamole on them. So guacamole is a high fat plant-based food that'll give it its consistency to kind of make you think it's, it's butter. And I don't mind if you put a little salt and pepper on it, that's fine. Um, but I don't want you to put butter and sour cream on it. Uh, and white rice, I would rather you have brown rice um, or purple rice or black rice because there's three parts of the grain. It's the uh, wheat, the germ, and the endosperm. And white rice, you, they, they, the, 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 the wheat has been removed the, the germ has been removed. The only thing that's left is the endosperm. And the wheat and the germ help to slow down the absorption of the carbohydrate, which is the endosperm is 100%, so you've removed that. Now, if I go to an Indian restaurant or a Chinese restaurant, and if they don't have brown rice, I will have white rice. But when I'm buying rice in my, in my house, I always buy brown rice, uh, or actually there's black rice, there's purple rice, any of those, that's got the three parts. Um, and when I'm in a restaurant, I always ask for brown rice. But if they don't have it, I don't totally avoid it. I will get the white rice. All right. Well, very good. Well, we got one, the one last question and then your last words. And, and then we get, go, we get to go home. Go ahead, Ronald. Hey, that, that's a great, that's a great, uh, uh, subject this morning. Uh, Vince, I, I'm seeing a lot of advertising about plant-based protein. And, and I'm wondering, what do you, what's your take on plant-based protein, um, you know, that comes in a jar and would, you know, which one out there would, should actually be, you know, one good thing to, to take? Yeah. Thank you for that question, Ronald. That, that they sell that to feed our brainwashed need of we need protein, we need protein, we need protein, we need protein. If you eat beans, lentils, split peas, chickpeas, fruits, vegetables, you get all the protein that you need from the unplant processed plant-based foods. You get everything you need. Uh, for those that are bodybuilding and they want extra protein, I would say do more tofu uh, or and do more beans and do more lentils, uh, do more seeds, do more nuts. And so you can get that, that that's even, that's even higher in protein. But the protein powders, at best, they're doing nothing. At best, they're doing nothing. At worst, they're actually harmful because you don't know what's in it. They're not regulated by the FDA. And everything that they say it's on a jar, a lot they've done tests, and it, a lot of times it's not even what's what they say. It's not, a lot of times it's not even in there. And there's harmful things that are in there. And it's man-made. You don't need it. What you need are fruits, 
vegetables, whole grains, lentils, beans, split pea, chickpea, oatmeal, potatoes, and other food that's grown from out the ground. When you eat like that, you can be strong as an 800 pound gorilla because those animals, they don't have, where, where, where do they get their protein powder from? Oh my God, if they don't make their shake, they're not gonna build muscle. <laughs> no, we, we have created this thing that we need this protein. Do you know anybody that's protein deficient? How many, go to the hospital and show me the protein deficient ward. I see these big cardiac wards, right? We, go, we know what just diabetes like crazy. Everybody's got high blood pressure and we're worried about we're going to be sick because we don't get enough protein. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane, but we've bought into it. And so we believe that and we actually buy protein and powder to add to it. Man, we don't need that. We totally don't need that. Just eat unprocessed plant-based foods and you get everything you need. There's only one uh, supplement that you need to take if you're plant-based and that's vitamin B12. B12 is a supplement that you do need to take. And anybody that's on the program for a period of time, I suggest that they get a blood test. And if they're deficient in anything, they may need to supplement. Vitamin D, you may need to supplement. Vitamin D is actually not even a vitamin. It's actually a hormone that is produced in your body when you're exposed to, uh, when you're exposed to sunlight. Uh, it's, I mean, we call it a vitamin. It really isn't a vitamin. It's a hormone that you produce when you're exposed to sunlight. <laughs> Uh, but because of the altitude where we live and in the wintertime, you know, we, not, we don't always get enough sun, so you may need to supplement vitamin D. But B12, you definitely need to supplement. You don't need any of these protein powders. You just don't need Save your money. Save your money and take that same money and buy some fruits and vegetables and beans, and you're a lot better off. Wow. Wow. Great. great. I love your energy, man. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's coming from eating below the line, below the red line, Ronald. <laughs> I guess I need to get there. <laughs> so, and, all right, just just go ahead, Sorrell. Let's wrap it up. Two more yeah. things, right? I have one question. This is CC. What are those two sugars that are good? Is it date, ground dates, and dates. something else? Yeah, uh, it's dates and molasses. Those are the two health promoting sweeteners. Dates are unbelievable. If you haven't had a good medjool date, they're really, really sweet. And if you take the medjool dates and, and you remove the pits and you put it in a food processor with a little bit of water and you can put a little lemon juice in there if you want, that'll make it last a little bit longer and make a date paste. Then you, you can buy date paste also, it's expensive, but you can buy date paste also. But dates and making your own date paste from that or date syrups are kind of the same thing. Look at the ingredients and if the ingredients are just dates or dates and water, that's what you want and molasses. Those are two health promoting sweeteners. Every other sweetener, my recommendation is for you to minimize it. I'm not saying totally eliminate it, but I'm saying minimize it. We get hooked on the combination of uh, sugar and fat or sugar and salt. Food manufacturers use those combinations because it sends pleasure to the brain, just like sex, and you got to have more. And so they, 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 they create these foods that give you so much pleasure, you got to have more. But you can wait, you can get off of that. When you eat plant-based for a period of time, you, 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 you lose the desire for that. And it just helps to promote health in so many different ways. Any, any good cookbooks for beans and lentils? Oh, boy. Oh boy, um, I would say, man, oh my, that's such a good question, Sorrel. And I've got a whole reference list, but I don't have them. Um, I would say, I would say, oh gosh, Forks Over Knives makes some cookbooks. So look, uh, look, Forks Over Knives is an incredible documentary of showing how you can reverse heart disease and reverse cancer with plant-based nutrition. And, uh, and, and they have a cookbook as well uh, Del, uh, chef Del, Del Schroff, uh, is an, is an amazing plant-based chef. Um, look, just, just Google chef Del. His last name, I believe is spelled S R O U F. I believe I might be wrong in that, but chef Del, but the name of, uh, if you, but if you look up the name of his book, which is the forks over knives cookbook, and then look up any other thing that he's made is amazing. Um, Brenda Davis is amazing. Um, yeah, so I would look, and I'm blanking on more because I could I could give you so many more 
Um, please reach out to me and I can send you a list. I should have had that in mind, but uh, yes, that's good. That's good. That's good, Surreal. Thank you for good, asking. Good, good. And uh, last but not least, beyond the protein craze, there's also the supplement craze. Uh, you mentioned B12, then you mentioned another. When it comes to supplement, uh, what's your take? My take is it's a $60 billion scam industry. It's a scam industry. You don't need it. You need whatever you're deficient in. And if you eat unprocessed plant-based foods, the you can get more nutrients than you could imagine from the food. And that's the way that your body it was designed to take in the, the nutrients. We try, to be, we, we try to be reductionist. We think we're smarter than nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, but, you know, you can't patent broccoli. You can't patent carrots. But you can take the beta carotene out of the carrot and say, oh, this beta carotene, it reverses cancer, this beta carotene, right? Because you can patent that, but it's bull crap. Because when you eat the carrot, you're getting hundreds and hundreds of nutrients that all work together. When you take the beta carotene out or take any other thing out, you think you're trying to be smarter than man. Let me give you an example on that. So beta carotene is in all orange uh, food. So it's in carrots, it's in cantaloupe, it's in sweet potatoes, uh, it's in pumpkin, it's in squash, and it's known as being a cancer fighter in its whole food form. But they, when they took the beta carotene out as a cancer fighter, they did this test, uh, this company was trying to market it as fighting cancer. They took smokers that had lung cancer and put them in two categories. One, they gave them the beta carotene, other one, they gave them the just a placebo. They had to stop the test because the people taking the beta carotene were dying. Literally, it killed them. You can't just take out one specific nutrient and say, this is the magic pill. Your body doesn't work that way. Your body would much rather have the whole food and you're getting all of the nutrients in a manner that your body was designed to take them in. So I, so, so I say B12, you got to take, and then you know, get a blood test. And if you're deficient in something, then supplement where you're deficient. If you're not, if you're not deficient in anything, then you're, you're, you're much, much, much better off eating the whole food. We don't even know as scientists and as chemists, all of the nutrients that's in an apple. We don't know. I mean, we've, we've discovered maybe 50, maybe a hundred. There's thousands in there that have no names to it. So just eat the whole food and you're getting everything that you need in the form that your body was meant to take it in. Well, Vince, we're going to have to have round two, brother. Bring me back. <laughs> Bring me back. Come on. Myself. Round two. Go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, any parting words before um, we close my, this huddle? I would say that you only have one body. Treat your health as though your life depends on it because it does. Eat, sleep, move. No substitute for those. Eat unprocessed plant-based foods and drink plenty of water. Get sleep. Move every day and be a part of social and loving relationships. Like this daily huddle is wonderful. I love the energy in this group. I love the love that's in this group. Gio and Sorrell provide a platform for us to socialize. That is important for health. And so when you understand, and there's no substitute for that, right? There's no substitute for eating, sleeping, moving, and having, and being part of loving relationships. You've got one body, treat it as though your life depends on it because it does. Well, thank you, Vince. <laughs> thank you. Let's do that. <laughs> well, gang, today's Friday. I bid you a phenomenal weekend. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on Monday. And to the tune of whatever Geo says, we're going to move. But here's the deal. Love. Laugh like crazy. Eat well. Stress less. And move. That is your formula to be a renegade and live a long, happy life. 
See you Monday. Have a great weekend. Vince, you rock, man. You rock. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank this you. was Thank you. awesome. Thank you. Goodbye, Faith. Goodbye, Landa. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thomas. Thank you. Luan, it's great to see you. Thank, thank you for inviting me to speak here, Laura King. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you were here. Yay! Bye, Vince. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Andre. Are you plant-based also? Vegan for four years. <laughs> Way to go. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Best decision you ever made, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> awesome. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye, Rose. You. See you in a few. Thank you, Vince. Hey, Sorrell, this was awesome, man. I, I appreciate having this opportunity. I, I appreciate you making the contribution you made. Sure it thing. is amazing. Thank you, thank you. If you pick up your phone, I'm gonna give you a buzz in two minutes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, sounds good, sounds good. Thanks so bye much. Bye-bye, everyone. All right, bye-bye now. I'm waiting for the music. How I about that? No, I guess no music, huh, Vince? They set I us up. No hey. <laughs> We got to do our own dancing. Yeah. I was actually getting an idea.